Hello everyone, in this video we will be going over how to format cells using C Sharp in the Excel interop library. We will be using this workbook as an example. Some of you may recognize this workbook from the previous video in which we went over how to format data. However, in this video we will be going over how to format cells instead. This includes changing row height, column width, the borders around cells, the color of a cell, and a few other concepts as well. The first thing we will go over is how to change the height of the first row. Let's go to our project. Currently, this project will open up that sample workbook as well as create a range to represent our column headers. If you're not sure how to set up an Excel interop project, please refer to the first link in the description. To change the height of a row is pretty straightforward. We can do this by typing worksheet.range a1 dot row height equals 25. This statement will apply this row change to any rows within the range we have specified. In this case, it will only affect the first row. Let's run our code. It may be hard to see, but the height of the first row has now increased. If we take a look at the first cell again, the text is being cut off a bit due to the column not being wide enough. Let's go ahead and fix this next. Let's go back to our code. Changing the column width is very similar to changing row height. Let's copy the statement above and change the property we're accessing from row height to column width. Let's also change the value from 25 to 15. Let's run our code. This first column is now wide enough to fit all the text in cell A1. Most of our columns actually need to have their width adjusted. Fortunately for us, we don't have to change each one individually. The interop library allows us to auto-fit multiple columns at once. Let's go back to our code. We can auto-fit all of our columns by typing worksheet.columns.autofit. Let's run our code. All of our columns have now been adjusted properly. This works well when we want to quickly adjust the width of an entire worksheet. However, if we take a look at the text in cell K1 over here, it would actually make more sense to merge these cells instead. Let's go back to our code. Since we're going to merge the cells on the right hand side, we don't want to also autofit those cells. We can avoid this by only autofitting our column headers. We can do this by typing columnheaders.columns.autofit. Let's also comment out the line here so that way only our column headers are affected. To merge those cells, let's type worksheet.range k1 colon m1.cells.merge. Let's run our code. Now, only the width of our column headers have been adjusted and the cells over here have been merged. Next, let's go over how to add borders to our cells. For this next step, let's first define a range for all of our data. Let's type range all data equals worksheet dot range a1 colon h35. To set the borders for all of the cells in our range, let's type all data dot borders dot line style equals Excel line style dot Excel continuous. This will set the borders to a continuous straight line. Other line styles include dashed lines, dotted lines, etc. Next, let's set the weight of our borders by typing all data dot borders dot weight equals Excel border weight dot Excel thin. Let's run our code. All of our cells now have borders around them. Next, let's go over how to change the color of our cell borders. We can do this by typing all data dot borders dot color equals color dot blue. We can also change the background color of our cells by typing all data dot cells dot interior dot color equals color dot light gray. This color enum is derived from the system.drawing namespace, so make sure you have that added to the project as well. Let's run our code. Our cells now have colored borders as well as a background color. Now, this may not be the best looking workbook you've ever seen, but hopefully by now you have an understanding of how to format cells programmatically. 
That's all for this video. If you found this video helpful and want to see more tutorials like these, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if there are any topics I haven't covered, feel free to suggest them in the comments and I may make a video about them in the future. Thanks for watching.